we'll work through it. All right. Uh, any meeting to order and uh, bring the mandatory opening statement. Due to the governor's statewide disaster declaration relating to the COVID-19 continuing pandemic and current public health guidelines for social distancing, I've determined that it's not prudent for the members of the Economic Development Commission or staff or to convene in person for this morning's meeting. Therefore, the members of the EDC are attending this meeting by video conference. Those same conditions require barring access to the public for in-person attendance. In light of those limitations, the public is invited to attend and listen to the meeting through Zoom platform or by phone, as indicated on the meeting agenda. To comply with the Open Meetings Act requirements for virtual meetings, this morning's meeting is being recorded. Okay, so we're official, we're called to order, and uh, welcome back, everybody. It's been a long time. Yes. But uh, things move on. In case... You, you don't know uh, the village meeting, the, the workshop, I think they were calling it for various reasons, did not take place. And yet in the meantime, because of the things we've been talking about, the big picture things, uh, we've just put off having a meeting. And that still is kind of the case. Uh, there was an interesting discussion uh, last Tuesday night about the development of the South 15, which if you can find time to listen to it, I wouldn't want to try and summarize what people are feeling. There was a, a longish discussion around the middle of the meeting uh, where the individual trustees were polled about how they feel about some of the aspects of development that we've been kicking around, uh, talking about the question of the degree to which the village may need to modify its attitude toward uh, multifamily uh, dwellings or uh, more dense development than the village zoning requirements presently allow. But we'll talk about that later on in the meeting. It is that I still don't see Pam. Um, Somebody got a free hand that might take some notes for us. Erwin, maybe scratch a few to give to. Yeah, I could do that. And then if we're recording it, she could always go listen to it also. There is, that is true. So don't worry too much about the notes. Uh, okay. So for attendance this morning for our recorded record, uh, we have Jennifer, we've got Mike Elliott, we've got Erwin Steinberg, we've got uh, Greg Jackson and uh, Jay Levin. So First item on the agenda is establishing the meeting schedule for this commission for the coming year. Uh, I talked with uh, Denise about this and she or somebody else in the village was nice enough to prepare a proposed schedule. And I believe it's been circulated to everybody. It's basically first Tuesday of the month or first Thursday of the month for our for certain meeting and then second Thursday of the month or the fourth Thursday of the month. That's why I got to have this written down uh, for our alternative meeting, our, our you know possible second meeting. So to move it forward, if somebody could make a motion to adopt the meeting schedule for the EDC that was circulated before the meeting, that would move us forward. Anybody? I'll move to I'll move to adopt the schedule, the meeting schedule for 2022. Excellent. Second. I'll second it. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Anybody opposed? Sounds good. And we do have a quorum, so we're fine with that. The, uh, the rest of what's on the agenda is really, in my mind, just kind of getting up to date with some of the things that have been going on. <coughs> um, the, the first bullet point is an example of that. We haven't talked up for a while. Uh, maybe we should put this one down because this is where Pam is uh, the liaison for these things. Um, so we'll do that. Uh, how about moving on to the next one? Uh, the LinkedIn status. I, I've heard some things uh, listening to the village board meetings, but uh, where are we at? LinkedIn is, go ahead, Mike, I'm sorry. No, I, I was gonna say, I don't have any update because uh, Greg, you and I never 
and that's my fault. We never touched base after our last meeting, but uh, you're more up to date on it than I am. Yeah, the uh, I've got to have a, another conversation with Trustee O'Reilly um, simply because she has, uh, uh, I shouldn't say simply, because she has oversight of communications. Uh, it is my recommendation, uh, and it'll be my recommendation also to Trustee O'Reilly that uh, we brought a, brought a management analyst on staff uh, a couple months ago. Uh, I think I mentioned that at the last meeting we were bringing somebody on staff, and she uh, has a um, social media background. She was chief of staff for a state senator, and she handled that senator's communications and social media presence. Um, I, rather than pay $150 a month to um, uh, Vicarious, uh, and since we're just trying this out, and I'm not suggesting that maybe they don't go together with uh, Nextdoor and Facebook because of parsing and things like that. I'd like to take a look at having our management analyst handle the LinkedIn for the EDC and as, as separate from the entire village's social media and um, uh, uh, other communication efforts. So if, you, if everybody's okay with that, and once I talk it through with um, Trustee O'Reilly to get her feedback, um, we can pretty much uh, execute on there. Well, just, I, mean, I think that's a great cool. idea. Um, as long as the one caveat there is, as long as we're in communication pretty regularly with Vicarious, so that our message is consistent across all social media platforms, and I, I think you'll be out all over that. But uh, yeah, that that's fantastic. Yeah, her name is Natalie Benner, and Natalie is also our liaison to Vicarious. Uh, she's got access to Facebook, and she's got access to Nextdoor, plus she is uh, doing our analytics on the social media as well. I, I, I will uh, re-up my offer to sit down with, with Natalie and offer my opinions and, and input uh, for what it's worth. Um, I, I'm happy to help. And we'll make that connection happen uh, in moving this forward. I think that's great, Mike. I appreciate it. Okay, that's that sounds you know that's all these things I really threw on here because I think we were making progress, but uh, a check in wouldn't hurt. This next is the same kind of thing, <clears throat> talking about the uh, development of a list of uh, brokers and developers in the area that would be. Useful say that we use on, on excuse me, LinkedIn. Uh, I, and that, I can and, just speak to and that. that's a, go ahead. No, go ahead, Jay. It's, it's Erwin. I just, you know, we have the list. Sorry. I think we we're trying to coordinate it with how we're going to use it with LinkedIn. So that would be sort of a subcategory, but we're ready to go on on that part with, with the list. Pam did a great job of putting that together four or five months ago, and we could <clears throat> certainly add to that. On a more micro basis, if there's any uh, uh, truth to the uh, situation on the South 15, that there's some change in potential zoning, that probably should be communicated to yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've got to, I've got to say, Jay, and I think uh, the chair said we'd talk about it later. I didn't. Uh, I think there's a. Uh, I don't think there is a firm uh, decision on that, but. Why, why don't we just consider if there ever is that that be communicated? Well, 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 we could bring it up. At some point. Well, we we will talk about it inevitably. Uh, I don't know whether we'll be directly involved based on what's happened so far. But my suggestion is, if you can find twenty minutes, find the video for last Tuesday night's meeting, and listen to the portion where they talk about the South Fifteen. All of the trustees spoke. Uh, the trustees all had slight differences in the way they felt about the factors that were being discussed. And uh, Jennifer, if you can add to this, my impression was that what was going on was that somebody uh, is interested in pitching a development, but they would like more information about the village's current attitude about more intense development or different kinds of residential development. And so the trustees talked about three factors. 
And it all informs what we've been talking about before in my mind, but I, I don't like to try and speak for them to let you all know what the thinking is. So uh, we can talk about it more in this meeting, but I think it would make more sense if you had a little bit better understanding of where the village board's going. That, that in my mind is where we've been going for some time, trying to get a better feeling for, and my own frustration is, you know, chasing after uh, commercial development is really hard in this market and maybe we ought to rethink, but um, you know, some of that was addressed at least as a side in the discussion last Tuesday night. And I don't want to put uh, somebody else's words on the table. So Roger, I, I recommend we, we review the village board, the, the portion that pertains to this and put it on the agenda for our committee next month, including um, how we could, how we could uh, assist in any process regarding that. I just wanted to make a comment. I think it, is it Brian Buckingham? Yes. Um, he, did you notice he was on the call? So I believe he's mm -hmm. probably in a conversation with the owners of the Long Grove 15 and he's approached us about multifamily housing. So, um, that's all I'm going to say at this point. Just watch the, watch the, hey, Pam, you made it. <laughs> Ray. Very good. So we, we were, we were discussing uh, the development of the South 15. And uh, for Pam's benefit, we were talking about uh, what happened with the village board meeting last Tuesday night. And the suggestion is that we're all going to try and find a way to look at the video of the meeting so that in our next meeting here, we can discuss what we heard of it as the village's attitude toward uh, multifamily housing and more dense housing or commercial development or whatever the case might be. Um, Greg, you have any thoughts beyond that about what uh, we can draw from this? I, I, I think, I think the, the uh, suggestion of viewing the, viewing the meeting will lend some uh, perspective uh, it'll give a better sense to the uh, EDC as to the discussion that's going on. I think it's positive that the discussion took place. Um, I was the one who coordinated that meeting with, uh, with Trustee O'Reilly and uh, other staff to uh, have those discussions with the property owners and the uh, development uh, uh, team. Uh, we walked away from it, uh, very satisfied that uh, Nothing had been discussed prior, but we were discussing now. And uh, so those were all positives, but I, I agree, Roger, to uh, rather than I put, like you put words in the board member's mouth, I think uh, watching that uh, video will be helpful. Sounds good. Um, one of the items on the agenda, Pam, that we skipped over was the item about uh, the International Council of Shopping Centers and the Long Road, historic Long Road development you know, in the LGDBA, whatever it is. And I know you've been doing most of that or, or say the, the Lake County Council. Uh, you have anything to add? Uh, I don't have yeah, anything I mean, I, The uh, The um, Council for Shopping Center Developments, uh, they, they had a, um, video discussion about the um, new infrastructure bill that passed on November 6th, the bipartisan bill. And among other things, it provides for 2.5 billion in grants to villages um, to, for communities to, you know, it's like a competitive grant program to uh, support uh, charger develop deployment. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we may want to look into that. If, you know, there's funds available for EV charging stations. Um, I think the problem for us as it probably always is, <laughs> is that um, it, 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 it slants towards disadvantaged communities, but nevertheless, um, you know, it, we do have a need. And, you know, I think it's worth our looking into whether we can qualify 
um, for funding for these charging stations. Uh, I guess the, the other thing that, um, just to give you a little summary of what was um, in the bill that might help us, one again is this um, adoption of an accelerated program for charging stations and funding provided to villages and towns to help them facilitate this. And there's going to be guidance that comes down about what is required. They're gonna, uh, the federal legislation is going to standardize the requirements for charging stations. So I think we need to be on top of that. I don't mind, you know, providing information. Greg, do you think we can get our planning people involved with that too? Get our who? I'm sorry, Pam, I didn't hear you. Uh, getting our planning people involved with looking into these grants for charging stations. It's uh, 1,138 pages, the infrastructure bill. I've, I've already, I'm probably uh, a third of the way through the bill right now. Uh, I've been reading it. It's my nightstand reading. Um, we, we've been, we, 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 yeah, we've been looking at uh, use of combining infrastructure money with ARPA funds for uh, some some infrastructure projects, as well as looking at water broadband uh, and some of those uh, um, items. I've been in. I've reached out to Congressman Schneider's office. Uh, we're going to reach out to Congressman Kasten's office to use those resources to tell us what they think fits in our house. Um, I'm trying to get a meeting with Greg Klotz, who's the uh, district chief of staff or district director with Snyder. We have a long working relationship. So what I'm hoping to do, long, long story short, is to uh, capitalize on our intergovernmental relations for them to target what, what, would, what we would be eligible for, and then for us to move forward. I will say this though, the reporting on the grants, both on the infrastructure and the ARPA funds is intensive. It could almost take a full timer to manage those grants. So uh, the reason I say that is we've got to be selective on what we want because we just simply don't have the resources to manage the grants and get the reporting in. Um, I'm happy to turn around and bring back to the EDC what our findings are and how they're applicable uh, how certain monies would be applicable to furthering economic development. So, um, so we'll work on that. Our planning people are Mundelein, and Mundelein's doing a lot of that for their own uh, for their own village. So we're also tap we're also tapping them for their eyes as well. Well, that that's very helpful, Greg. Because you know I'm sure there's similar criterion for you know the villages are are pretty similar. So. That would be helpful if they can see what they can qualify for, what we can qualify for. It looks like it's primarily, you know, for us would be these charging stations, possibly the broadband that you mentioned. And a third possibility, again, you know, this is something that we could look into would be, um, you know, for water to the downtown. Because I know it, in the that past, we have developed, um, you know, Jim Hogue had done a write-up already, you know, that, that is there, you know, in terms of what we would need to plug into, um, you know, the Buffalo Grove. And yeah, we, you know, we, we've already, we've already had the meetings. I've met with Dane, Dane Bragg over at Buffalo Grove. Our engineer and I are putting together a cost benefit analysis right now. We met with President Jacob and Trustee Tanucci, who has oversight. Uh, about the costs and the expansion of water into the downtown. That's what we were potentially uh, presenting to the board to uh, look at for the use of the ARPA funds. Uh, the RIPA grant, uh, we did some follow-up on it with DECO as part of the Rebuild Illinois infrastructure projects. And uh, though they haven't been announced, it doesn't appear we're going to secure that grant from the state of Illinois. So we're looking for other financial resources. We've got the cost brought down to somewhere between 1.9 million and 3.1 million, depending on how far and what we want to extend to. So, um, and that's and that's also to your point, Pam, part of the uh, infrastructure bill that we are looking for ways to, if the board chose to move for, chose to move forward with that, that they would use some of that infrastructure money to complement the ARPA funds. I think that's perfect, 
that's perfect, Greg, because, you know, the way I, I read a summary of the bill, you're right. I mean, I, <laughs> I, I don't know if anybody has time to go through a thousand pages in two days. But anyway, according to the summary, it looks like, you know, there's also um, clean water initiatives. And being that right. we, this has been written up by, you know, folks that you know, are engineering people for a few years, we do have the write-up prepared already, the rationale for why we need it, the water quality, you know, analysis, that type of thing. So you're right. I think we could possibly fit ourselves into that bucket since we've already done a lot of the legwork, you know, to explain what's required. And, you know, if the cost, um, like you said, the cost analysis has already been done too. So, you know, we may be good to go if, if Mundelein or, you know, feels that we could qualify for that. Yeah, and, and it's, to your point, Pam, it's a shovel-ready project, which, may, which makes it even better. Right, right. I know, you know, when we worked on it last year, um, you know, Jim Hope did a lot of the work, but, um, you know, we had an agreement already with Buffalo Pro. There was like a cooperative agreement that was required to tap into their water source. And I don't, you know, I that's something we can also get, Craig, you know, because I think there, you know, we had already gotten that agreement from them. Yeah, I, I have that already, and I got that from Dane as well as their matrix uh, for financing. If we wanted to use them to finance the difference, okay, that's great. Uh, that is great because you know the, the more you know we, in terms of projects we've already kind of um, identified and written up, it probably would uh, accelerate the process of trying to apply for those things. Like you said, it's such a a heavy lift in terms of a job, but if we you know, if we have a lot, a lot of that prepared, it would be helpful. The the village staff clearly, from what was talked about at the board meeting, is on top of these kind of things. Uh, and to editorialize, I have to say, much more than it has been in the recent past. Maybe for whatever reasons. Uh, and the other piece of this is that while we're all sitting here saying, you know, if there's money out there, why not take it? that's not the uniform attitude of the people on the board of trustees. So you have to kind of keep that in mind as well. But yeah, this is an area that uh, I think it's really positive to say that we're on top of it too. And we're doing what I would hope the commission would do help to inform, uh, not to, right. policy, but to inform and, and that, that's a, a great job of passing that stuff along. Um, I would anything also else say about anything about the, well, well I just, Lake County Central Council Board or anything like that? I, I heard that a couple of times. Anything there? Well, the Lake County Partners, you know, they're, the one. Yeah, they're another avenue to look into for, again, I don't want to, you know, be, you know, be a dead horse on this, but, you know, they are developing their own set of infrastructure priority a priority list mm -hmm. that they've been working on for a few years. So that's another thing that our planning people could tap into, you know, um, to get our projects on that list to see if there's other funding available through Lake County. Sounds great. Um, the only item on the agenda that we haven't uh, gotten to yet is uh, the Stevenson Marketing Project. And uh, Jennifer, you want to say anything at this point or? Sure. So, um, uh, I think it was a, a, a big success. We, um, Anne and I actually met with um, the two marketing teachers uh, Tuesday at four, and we kind of debriefed on it. Um, the, the teachers are, the, I mean, if you had a chance to look at the presentations, there's a real discrepancy between either the, the polishedness of the project. <laughs> um, and so you can see the seniors that have, had marketing i mean they're pretty like the ep a couple of the epilogue ones are really great and they have some really brilliant ideas and then you see some with some spelling errors and um they're the teachers are really struggling with the pandemic um they have they have some sophomores in their classes that have 
this is their first time being in high school really and sitting in class and they're struggling to transition from Zoom to in classroom. Um, so it was interesting. We kind of <laughs> diverged down this long conversation about uh, how the uh, pandemic is affecting education, but, um, and there's really short staff like everybody. So um, I think that they had wished that they had had a little bit more um, able to kind of mentor these students a little bit more um, individually. They did talk a little bit about the discrepancy in the participation by the businesses. Some businesses went above and beyond and were super involved and some kind of dropped the ball and were, made it kind of difficult for the kids. Um, the, the businesses that I talked to that did work and collaborated with the students, they said they love the experience, they want to continue. They, anything they, these students need, they'd be willing to step up and help. Um, so I think it is a positive collaboration and we would like to continue it. We are going to take next semester off because one of the, they're down a marketing teacher. They're just a little overwhelmed. Um, so I think we're gonna take next semester off and then switch it up for next fall and work on, instead of doing, um, kind of marketing for the businesses we're talking about marketing the village in general with like welcome to long grove packages so they would pull together a um kind of a i don't know how you would say it like a welcome basket so it would have information on these are the services in the village and you know maybe trying to tie businesses in to give out coupons and so that's what the the next project is going to be working on in the fall um, but I would encourage you if anyone had a chance to look at the presentations. Um, the, the one question I wanted to talk to you about is how, I think it would be great if we could put these on the EDC website and maybe put a blurb in the newsletter um, just to encourage people to come visit the site. Um, and does anybody have any thoughts on that? On, or do we just put a little, I don't so. If you don't put them all on, then you're going to have parents who are going to be less <laughs> than happy. Uh, and if you put them all on, nobody's going to bother because there are way too many to sit and look at. So yeah. that's one thing that I guess we'll have to decide uh, in terms of how we do that. I think it's an excellent idea to pop a couple of them up there. Uh, if it were me and the resources weren't an issue, I'd say, we'll let somebody, whoever that somebody is, put a new one up every month and, uh, and rotate through and that could eliminate some problems. But I think it's a great idea to put them up there. Um, if, if no other reason than that uh, the, the students will tell their aunts and uncles and who knows else to check them out and that's more people to the website. Yeah, I thought, um, I, I agree. I think we we can't not put them all up there because I think kids' feelings are going to get hurt and <laughs> if they don't see they're up there. But um, I don't maybe I can work with um, Denise or I could write up just a little piece about the collaboration and then we can just have a link to all of them. But I think maybe you're right. Maybe if we get the LinkedIn up, we could feature them like, you know, yeah, but, yeah. Um, I don't know if that's showing preferential treatment to businesses, which is something we've tried to be uh, cognizant of. Um, but again, all of these businesses had an opportunity to participate, and maybe if they know that this is going to be a revolving um, collaboration, it would encourage other businesses to step up. And because I, I, I do worry that the <laughs> we get the same businesses that raise their hand to say, I'll help. Um, and a lot of people, a lot of the businesses don't. And I think at some point they're going to get fatigued with the volunteerism. Um, so, so we post them all and maybe when LinkedIn, we rotate them up. Let's, let's see. You know, let's talk to Denise and see what, or whoever the appropriate person is. Okay, I'm Where's sure we'd have to run it by um, Bobby, as she does communications too, and 
So I'll, I'll try to set up a meeting with how to make that happen. Sounds great. All right. Um, so we've covered the agenda, except for the, the working session part about the strategic plan. Anybody thoughts about uh, doing a strategic plan for next year and, and uh, where we go from this point? I, you know, I, I had a thought. I, I would like to have the strategic plan done by the board first so we could follow that. Because if we start and have ideas, it's, it's not going to be good uh, if we're taking a different path than they are. So we want to follow their path. We're, we're um, helping them and helping the village. That would be my thought to put off our strategic plan. However, I think one of the things we can work on now is this infrastructure bill. How could we provide um, <clears throat> input and help to whether it's Greg or anyone else that's involved? You know, maybe a little subcommittee of this group to help on that um, because it's, it could be massive. It could involve other villages. I, I don't know, but I think that's something that we should get our arms around. That's my thought as a goal. I agree with you, Erwin, <laughs> and I think we've had uh, every intention to get this workshop and kind of get uh, a direct, clear direction for the EDC, and I'm hoping that happens at the beginning of the new year. Um, the one thing that I had thought of that we had talked about months ago um, was maybe doing a little research on the, the group on electric charging stations, because there's a lot of companies out there that they actually pay for the infrastructure and they get, get the profits from the charging stations. And so it's very little cost to us. I mean, we actually could, there's different brackets, but there's different companies out there doing that. In fact, I was at the Bank of America in Lake Zurich yesterday and there, were, there was a Porsche and a Tesla that were sitting there and the guys were on their phone and they were just sitting there charging their car. So, and they get they pay to do that so um and i can't remember the name of the brand of the charging station but it, it's a for fee um and they're out there so i think if maybe i i know i have research on one of them but I, I thought maybe we could each kind of look out and see if we can find a list of companies that do this and do a little background research to give to the the board um, that might be helpful moving forward because we have the conduit in the parking lot now it's pretty much ready to go if we can find somebody that's interested in putting their charging stations so may, yeah, maybe on that, rather, that, rather than us doing all kinds of research i forgot the gentleman's name from the was it the uh, palatine auto dealership who was a, a guest a number of times oh over right over yeah Maybe yeah. someone should contact him and just, he, I'm, I'm sure he has some association he can refer us to that knows this, or he has five or six people. I mean, it's in his industry. So he may know of some people. That's a good suggestion. I mean, I'd be happy to do that. Okay. It, it makes me think of what used to be, which was when cable TV first came in, villages all granted a franchise for their village. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was an Illinois statute, but I don't know that there's anything comparable now in terms of enabling a village to decide that uh, any one company has the right, the, the exclusive right to put in the stations in a village, uh, which might turn it into a, a revenue source for the village as well as a convenience and a infrastructure kind of thing. I, Greg, have you heard any rumor of legislation about? licensing or are they just leaving it up to the marketplace so any clue? yeah it's it's uh as it exists now it's up it's uh up in the market marketplace i think there's uh, differing views on uh charging stations i see it happening very much uh, i don't know from a franchise standpoint to be honest roger because i'm not hearing anything along those lines but i think we're going to see exactly what jenny described almost like the uh, privatization of parking uh, in Chicago and in other communities, we're going to see a privatization of um, charging stations where there will be some money uh, brought back to the village. But uh, um, to how that works out and how it plays out, I think right now sits in the marketplace. 
Yeah. Well, maybe we can, I, I think it's a good suggestion, Jenny. Maybe we can all look into that, you know, or when you were that, that uh, the gentleman from Pal you know, the Palatine dealership is a good idea. Maybe we could try to contact someone at, uh, I'd be happy to do that, like at Lincolnshire to see what they're doing. Because I notice they have charging stations, um, you know, in many of their businesses. I think Rita O'Connor has done some research on this already. And uh, yeah, Pam, maybe trying to catch uh, Rita and see what she's got the way of collecting okay. research, right? At least as a plan, maybe we should put this on the next agenda. Uh, what we found out, probably That's not the next idea. agenda, probably the February agenda, because between yeah, now and the next meeting is going to be all holiday stuff. Most likely. And, and, I, and I think this would really good, be good for, for our group because it's proactive. It could create uh, additional revenue for the village. And if we could be on the leading edge of, of some recommendations to bring to the board, I think it would it'd be good for PR also for developers showing that we're proactive, aggressive, and, and also for the community in providing for their needs. And then there's quite obvious a need for it. Um, and so I, I think there's a lot of potential. So I think, yeah, if we could do that, maybe if, if I do have information on one of them, I'll try to write it up and send it out to you so you know which company I've kind of done some research on. Um, yeah, if you could do it, that'd be great, Jenny. Can I, can I offer something up the, um, if, if you don't, uh, I, I sit on, I sit on a, a group of late with that meets once a month or once every two months, depending on what our schedule allows with, uh, just about every Lake County, uh, manager, village manager and village administrator. And what we generally do is sit there and talk about things that uh, we, we do a lunch meeting and then we do other communication, but we're basically talking about everything that affects our communities that we have in common. What legislation may be in play, what initiatives may be in play. And um, we oftentimes send out a couple questions to the entire group and get responses. And the responses are within a day or two and I can have up to 40 responses from my colleagues. Um, if there are questions that DDC wants to have answered for, as far as what our other village is doing with A, B, C, or D, and you, and you can get me those questions, um, I'm, I'm happy to disseminate that to, to my colleagues and see what kind of response we get back and, and then share that with the committee. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. That's great, Greg. Because, I mean, I know there's a lot of communities are ahead of us on this one. So, um, you know, who they worked with would be good to know. <laughs> what has their experience been would be really helpful. Um, and like I said, there's usually like five brackets, like the village owns them wholly, the company owns them wholly, but then there's like different brackets where, you know, what is their experience? And so I'll put together some questions and send them over. Yeah, it, it's, yeah. And, and those are easy things because it's a quick response from my colleagues. And it's, so it's not any, it's not any big work for us to do in staff. So it's, but it's, an, it's a great resource. Yeah. Thank you. So, so after that, we're still back to a strategic plan. The one that we did last year is very generic. And the, the question I have is, are we going to try and push to take areas like um, the area north along Midlothian Road, where there might be uh, commercial development in the sense that uh, Cranes had an article last week, I guess it was, about how the suburban warehouse market is really hot and people are looking for land to put warehouses. And maybe we've got a little bit up there. That was discussed at the village meeting because it matches up with some land that uh, the county or the state, the Department of Transportation might be giving up now that they're not building Route 53 further north. But that's, you know, that's a focus. And I'm thinking about really big idea focuses. Are we going to look at making downtown Long Road better? That's kind of been a pretty clear focus for a long time for the village. Uh, 
or expanding it in terms of just finding other places that develop sales tax or beyond that, looking at some of the bigger picture things we've talked about, about is it realistic to look at sales tax as the prime reason to do economic development? Uh, it was interesting because uh, Trustee Kritzmeier at the meeting Tuesday night in talking about the development of the South 15 said, you know, or maybe it was Trustee O'Reilly said that a good reason to put uh, multifamily residential in the South 15 down by the sunset was that it would create customers for the water system. And whoever it was that said it, if I heard it right, said the village does better by taking a water charge every month than it does by collecting sales taxes. So there's this factor in terms of how we should develop uh, the village's uh, remaining open spaces. I, I'm, you know, I would really like to hear the village talk about this big picture question, not just about some single development, but about is the village is the village done developing except for putting up more houses, and that's fine, you know. But then, shouldn't we be, shouldn't we not spend time on worrying about getting new retail stores in, in whatever areas? And any thoughts about my my ramble there? Sorry about that. Actually, Roger, I think you're right. I, I think where where is the focus, residential or commercial, um, or, or consumer for the sales tax side? I, I think that's great. I think I think we have to have a focus, and and not just have scattergun uh, approach on that. So um, <clears throat> maybe maybe that part of the strategic plan. Which you know, here's the three categories. Maybe maybe it's um, the uh, multifamily housing or housing. Two would be um, retail, three would be commercial. And where should, determine where the focus should be for this group. And let's put our priorities on that because we only have a limited amount of time. Let, let, let me go back a half a step. Uh, I am in touch with uh, the person who heads up the uh, warehousing research, big, big, uh, uh, the, the big uh, facilities like Amazon and who's building where. If you want, I could see if he's available to uh, be on a Zoom next month for us. Because he may say, you know what, this community isn't right uh, or it is right for it. And here's what you need. You need 15 acres, you need 30 acres, you need access to major highways. And that's where the big, the big companies are going. However, there may be the, the um, smaller boxes that are needed for the home delivery. So if you want, I could, I could reach out to them. Yes, please. Absolutely. I think that'd be, I think, I think the more research, so maybe part of the strategic plan, let's research the areas and provide data to mm -hmm. the board in the areas that are important. This would be one of them, you know, yeah. is that suitable, is Long Grove suitable for that? And then drill down on retail and drill down on uh, uh, multifamily or housing. Those are my thoughts. Anybody else? I... I, you know, I think that really captures what we've been doing and uh, what challenges we perceive at this point in terms of wanting to do something that is worthwhile. Um, you, I won't speak for her, but Mina's got some very strong thoughts about what we should be doing and what the village should be doing. And they're all incorporated in what we're talking about, but we become much more informed. Uh, a great example is when Brian Buckingham came and spent some time with us and uh, helped us rethink what we're doing. So that's a, uh, Let's see if we can't get this contact of Irwin's up here for the next meeting. That'll give us some substantive things that we can do to provide more for the board. And in the meantime, kind of sit on our hands in terms of our long-term plan and list until the board gives us a little more help. Uh, 
maybe framing it just in terms of exactly what uh, Irwin said, but where should our priorities be? Should they be on residential issues? Should they be on consumer issues? Should they be on uh, commercial interest, you know, possibilities? Uh, just that big question being answered, uh, if they could rank those would be a help. Yeah, I mean, maybe they could, they can rank, because I mean, we've, you know, we can throw out the four or five things we've been discussing. And, you know, maybe they could, uh, the board can rank these areas or give us some feedback about things we've talked about in the past. You know, um, like you said, Roger, you know, uh, income, is, is there uh, any income um, identifying income er areas of uh, income opportunities for the village? Um, you know, what area, what areas, um, commercial, residential, do they feel we should focus on? And then there's some big picture things that I think they probably feel uh, it makes sense for us to get involved with, but to what extent? You know, like uh, implementation of the comprehensive plan that we already have for the village, um, monitoring legislation to see what opportunities there are, marketing the village. I mean, things we've already talked about over the years. You know, there's kind of these broad categories that we can focus on, but then how do we drill down to specifics? So I think there's really two levels that we need to maybe ask, you know, get feedback from the board about what, you know, what are their thoughts? You know, is it, does it still make sense for us to be involved with these kind of big picture areas or do they want us to focus more on some specific areas of development? I would also say, I think one of the big things of the EDC is to um, support current businesses in the village. And at, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic, we reached out to all of the businesses. Um, is it appropriate for us to reach out again, see how they're doing? Uh, we had always talked about doing, um, you know, a lunch or a breakfast with, and invite all of the businesses to come and do some networking and, maybe, you know, bring in speakers to support them. But I, I do think that that's a huge part of, you know, retention and support of our current businesses. Anybody else? So let me try to summarize. I think one of the things that came, I think our goal should be this year to um, support the social media program you know, in, in, you know, um, promote, enhance and promote social media. I think that's a big job ours because it hits a lot of different things. It could be the developers, it could be the retail part, you know, it could go in many different directions. I think that's a, a goal of, of ours. And then, and then um, I think we should also, um, maybe number two is uh, determine where our focus should be, get feedback from the, the board, whether it should be, you know, housing, retail, or big box. I'm, I'm just throwing that out. You know, it doesn't have to be exactly those words. And then three is how do, how do we promote existing businesses, uh, whether they be retail or commercial in Long Grove? And, and that part, if you want to drill down, it could be, a, um, I'll say a little breakfast program or something. And maybe, maybe we even have certain business owners come up with the ideas of things they're thinking about, how we could do it. Let it come from them. They may have more ideas than us. They're in the trenches every day. So those would be the three things rather than standard gun approach with, you know, the, the, the issue of the week. Yeah, I think it makes sense. So in other words, we, you know, we we indicate to the board what, our, what we're thinking in terms mm -hmm. of focus, but try to get, you know, get their input to right. see what areas they want us, you know, what specifics they want us to focus in on. You right. know, let's it, it would be, Pam, a draft. Here's a draft of our plan. Are these the areas you want to focus in on? And what, what recommendations do you have? And then we can go from there. We can run from there. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I, I know you, Roger, you did circulate um, a strategic plan that we all kind of commented on. 
maybe it's we extremely should, maybe generic. Try, yes. Maybe we could try to, you know, get that get that chinned up a little bit <laughs> with some of these ideas that you know Erwin was just mentioning or Jenny and just you know four or five bullet points and just you know um I took my notes and as soon as we close out here I will try and put that into a document that I can circulate sooner rather than later. Um and you know beyond just us to Bill Jacobs and uh, right. village manager and whatnot. Yeah, I, I think that Erwin uh, did a nice job of summarizing what our focuses are on a very big picture, which is all we need at this point. Uh, all right. Right. It, it, and you know, we mentioned the infrastructure and the potential funding of that. I, I don't think that should be on our, our agenda other than um, anything we can do to support that. For, from the board standpoint, there's so many there's so many intricacies. We're not involved with that. We don't understand that. That's a Greg and 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 the board and whoever other you know um, professionals can help in that regard. I think that's just out of our league, unless they assign something to us to look into. I wouldn't yep. even spend time. I would spend time on these three or four strategic issues at our meetings, and not not get uh, not digress from that. Well, I, I think, Erwin, where that may come into play, you know, I, I think those things do come into play. You know, I think to the extent that the board wants us to look into some of these things, to the extent that we come on to ideas that might be helpful for existing businesses. You know, like during the pandemic, I think we were very helpful in providing, um, you know, workshops and not, not workshops so much, but, you know, our um, Zoom meeting presentations um, that, that had ideas for these businesses on how they could get through the pandemic. And, you know, as we uh, look at some of these uh, ideas and some of this legislation that's coming down, some of it relates to individual businesses too, things that can help them you know, uh, grants that they can get, credits that they can get for being more energy efficient, um, ideas that might be helpful for these small businesses that they may not be aware of. And whether we bring in speakers or whether we, um, you know, as you were saying, Jenny, some breakfast meetings or something where we can, maybe if we're not the, if we're not the experts, we can bring in experts and, you know, at least have a forum for, some education along these lines, I think would be helpful. You know, because there's some village issues that maybe are beyond our expertise. You know, it's a great area that's, you know, um, village planning, but then there's help to the businesses themselves. And so the, the legislation, you know, the, the uh, infrastructure bill has some areas that are very helpful to smaller businesses you know, credits that they can use for being more energy efficient, um, you know, new expanded deductions that they can take, you know, for, I, I think the the uh, the real estate taxes, you know, the ability to take more um, deductions for, for real estate taxes are in the legislation. So I'm not saying we're the experts, Erwin, but I think we can bring in the experts that can help the businesses. Right. No, I, I, I agree with you, Pam, on, on that part. I was going towards this infrastructure bill that was passed, which is way, you know, way beyond me. I can only speak for myself. But I like your idea of, of and maybe that's one of our to-dos. Let's plan some sort of educational event where the business owners could come in. Maybe we bring one of our politicians in to explain the infrastructure, someone from the staff, and someone on some of the other benefits, and then get some feedback from them. Yeah, I mean, maybe, you know, if our focus is how can we help you, you know, the businesses in our community, maybe we can bring in these professionals to, you know, give them some high level highlights of what this legislation can do for them. Okay, um, it sounds like we're really revisiting the same things now and we're, we're all in agreement, not to the point where we're gonna adopt a formal resolution, resolution, but in the sense we all have the same kind of attitudes. 
and we can get back at the next meeting with something perhaps more formal uh, that uh, the village trustees can see. Um, anybody have anything else by way of uh, new business perhaps? Uh, Roger, just to give you, I, uh, I said I would provide the university with an update of the activity um, at each time that we uh, we met. Um, the fish, the fish monitor, in uh, that's opening up in the Commons, just got their certificate of occupancy. Um, the Sock Monkey Museum just got their certificate of occupancy. I've been approached by a number of potential development opportunities that are in the very conceptual phase right now. Uh, one of them is for a uh, Lake Cook in 53, uh, the northwest uh, piece of property that borders uh, unincorporated Lake County for a um, development, uh, a commercial development initiative there. I've been contacted by an individual who is working with um, some investors for a potential uh, brew pub. We're in the early discussions with that, or we were in the discussions. He was gonna come back and revisit it with us. I just had a extensive uh, meeting, uh, including Mundelein staff, our staff and our engineer about the development of homes at the Deer Trail uh, PUD, which is um, fit, uh, just north of 53 in Lake Cook Road. Uh, so we've been working on that as well. So uh, and so it's, it's been a little bit busy on our end with some in, uh, development inquiries and, and we continue to work those. One thing I would, uh, I've, I've been approached about as well is um, the potential of pop-ups in the downtown area, seasonal pop-ups in businesses that are uh, unoccupied. And so I, I'm starting to explore that um, a little bit with the business association, some of the business association members. And then once it's got some legs, uh, I'll go back and have discussions with the uh, village board and uh, Trustee O'Reilly, who's the liaison to the downtown district. Uh, talking businesses are talking uh, three months at a time, perhaps Christmas, perhaps spring in a pop-up storefront, which would also give us a visual of not having such a high vacancy rate because we do have a significantly high vacancy rate in that uh, downtown area compared to the national norm. Um, so those are just some things we've been working on in regards to development, economic development, as well as um, some community development. Is the brew pub at downtown Long Island or in the periphery? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Is the brew pub in downtown Long Grove or in the periphery? Where, where, the, where's the general area? Uh, the triangle. At uh, the the approach to me was, would that could that be rezoned across from Harbor Chase? And what I'm sorry, Greg, what would that be for? Uh, uh inquiry regarding a, uh, the ability to put a brew pub uh, for uh, at that location. Okay. And that's what we've been working on amongst five hundred other things. That's it, to me. That sounds very positive. Maybe it's because we didn't get as much input before, but uh, that's a long list, longer than uh, I've heard in in recent past. So that's that's great. Uh, Anything else by way of new business or? The status, what is our request for a uh, gun uh, sales and or range in Long Grove? Is that progressed at all or what's that? It was, it was referred to, it was referred by the village board to the zoning board of, uh, the planning commission zoning board of appeals to look at a text amendment uh, related to uh, uh, gun range and associated sales. That language is being uh, drafted now by staff. Staff will get it to uh, the chair and the PC ZBA uh, in January, and then uh, they'll they'll make their uh, pass at it and uh, uh, their decisions and recommendations 
I uh, don't know if it'll go back to the village board for, uh, in January or the first meeting in February, but that's where uh, that's where it's at right now. So it, it might require a zoning change. Is that it, Fred? Um, it, it certainly requires a, a text amendment because of uh, what what is and is not allowed in, uh, in the village in regards to weapons and weapon sale. And uh, uh, that's retail over there. So there will be a uh, uh, an amendment to the PUD as well. Hey, Greg, um, this might not be the forum for this, but I did want to um, circle back on uh, something we talked about uh, at the last meeting about the possibility of having, having that high-end art show in Long Grove. Um, I was talking to Jennifer a little, little bit about it this morning, I, and I apologize if, if uh, this was discussed at a board meeting, and, and I'm wasting everyone's time, but currently the, the Downtown Long Grove Business Association um, decided against that. Um, and and uh, I know you answer my question via email, Greg. But I, you know, in my opinion, that's the wrong decision for Long Grove. I think that was an easy slam dunk uh, that would have benefited the village and especially the downtown businesses if we were able to pull that off. Now I don't know all of the pros and cons that that association considered, but it brings up two points. Um, I think we need to work in more collaborative fashion with that association. I know, Pam, you mentioned you were going to uh, attend their meetings or uh, maybe reach out to them. I had reached out to Jesse in the past about working collaboratively with the EDC. Um, he said he was open to it, but then we never got anything on the books and, and I dropped it. So, you know, shame on me as well for not being more aggressive, but it just seems like that would have been a good way to bring um, some uh, a high-end audience to the village for an additional weekend over the summer. Um, I don't know their reasoning for turning down the proposal other than uh, the feedback you gave me that they thought it was happening too quickly. But um, Greg, if you could, you know, maybe fill us in on, I understand the village doesn't have the, the capability or the resources to manage an event like that. That's why it falls to the downtown association. Um, but just, I'd, I'd like, Greg, like to hear your thoughts and, and, you know, how can we get initiatives like this moving forward? Um, My, or if there's some reason why the decision to go against it uh, was the right decision for the village. Mike, let me suggest that you have that discussion with Greg or with Jennifer or with me. Uh, it's some not on the record. Uh, there is... Very good. There are nuances there. And, and at the last village board meeting, uh, some members of the HLGB, whatever it is, uh, were upset about uh, things that have been said about them or weren't said about them. I just, I'd rather not. Uh, it's a sensitive area right now. I, you give me a call. I'll sure. tell you what I know. And uh, you can watch yeah. the village board and, and kind of get and what's I'm, going I'm on. I'm trying but to learn more. So they, it is they more are used to being in control of their own destiny and like it that way. I think that's not an overstatement. So for now. Very good. Yeah, very good. Anything else, anybody? I would not be adverse to a motion to adjourn. We can hang around and talk afterwards, but any thoughts, anybody? I'll move to adjourn. Sounds good. Anybody second? I'll second. Thank you. Any opposed to adjourning at this point? All right, meetings adjourned. We're officially done. And uh, obviously people will want to uh, wish happy holidays to everybody else, myself included. And uh, it's, been, it's, it's been nice to see everybody again. It's been what, two months? Yes. It is, it is. Hey, hey one, one question. When is the January meeting? Just give me the specific. January 6th. January 6th. Okay, because I want to set up that person. Anyway, happy holidays to everyone. Everybody have a good holiday. It's good to see everybody. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. There we go.